I'm super excited to see everybody here, everyone's tonight. Um, so I'm Emma Scott. Um, I'm mostly writing poetry and then stuff that I don't know what it is. And we'll find out someday what it is. Um, what pulls me to the page is usually about the insufficiency of language. Um, and I'm working currently on a specific topic that has to do with um, chemical American culture and textile mills in New England. Um, Catholic mysticism overlap with magical practices, uh, the binary of canonization versus demonization of women's bodies and illnesses, uh, what devotion might look like from an atheist perspective, uh, the thin line between devotion and obsession, and I am really walking the discomfort zone <laughs> with everything I'm working on right now. So the way I usually work is um, I don't write very linearly. I work for more values of generated writing that come through meditation, determination, uh, chance operation, rituals, and research. Um, and that's kind of how I work. So I am working on a series of manuscripts that relates to a real-life person named Louis Rose Barron, who was born in a small town in Quebec in around 1900, moved to uh, Central Falls and then to Woodstock Rhode Island, where she ended up living down the street from my grandmother and my grandmother's mother, who it turns out was born in the same town as her, and then slightly additional background. I did not even know that I had French Canadian heritage until a few years ago because of slightly the ratio and all kinds of cultural things. So that's, that's the next story. And I'm just going to read three short pieces from this manuscript. Uh, when I, the titles refer to the stigmatic, and that's um, the presence of Rose. And uh, this first poem is based on a photo of Rose in her bed in 1931. It's called The Stigmatic on Her Bed Turns for the Camera. Posed like a bowl of fruit, a pheasant, a ewer, Facing an unknown vanishing point. Bandage about the forehead and throat, lips firm, as if keeping a prayer to herself. Under her swaddling, she bleeds, bleeds, bleeds. Her faith terrifies me. The small metal of it, its cloying veil of roses. I tilt my face to meet hers in mutual horizon. Imagine us as illuminated marginalia in a book of ours. Um, so did I mention, yeah, she had this stigmata, and she got roped into some uh, political drama uh, about French-speaking versus English-speaking Catholic schools in the 1920s. Um, her biographer, uh, the biographer, biography of hers came out in 1939. It was written by her priest, so it's very slanted um, toward mysticism. They have a mystery. Uh, this is called According to Father Boyer. Upon the dire illness of Rose's sister in a Fall River hospital, Rose, while confined to her bed in the socket, presented herself to her sister to offer healing. In his appendix to her biography, he states that in Catholicism, this is known as bilocation. Even those who did not witness her apparition at her sister's distant bedside reported the room afterwards was filled with a powerful sense of flowers. They agreed that at that moment, Rose was present in two places at once. Father Boyer does not mention that bilocation was also achieved by Pythagoras, several Hindu gurus, and the cultist Alistair Crowley. Uh, so in some of the poems, uh, my alter ego called the heretic meets up with the stigmatic um, Marie in kind of a liminal space that sometimes we go on walks together or have conversations. Um, sometimes they use tarot spreads to kind of build what's happening in the poems. Um, and this one is called the heretic walks with the stigmatic past the church in winter. Snow muffles her pain, soft and analgesic, our clothes worn and insufficient. We passed colored panes backlit by beeswax and hymns. Bells echo in the cavern of your ribs. You leave me, you enter. 
I understand the currency of comfort of accepting the offer of bread, though meager and unsalted. Sometimes the price of light is darkness. I have not yet lost my taste for impossibilities. The wild calls me to continue past my hunger for ozone and violets into the night, ankle deep and numb. My name is John Sproul. I'm from uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, and I'm a painter. Um, with my work, I'm walking through what it means to be human, uh, addressing fear and the need to be loved as it manifests itself in things such as body image, ego, isolation, loneliness, and so on. And I'm really trying to gain a better understanding of the reasons behind why we do what we do. So this first painting is uh, titled M.M. It's 60 by 48. Um, when I was young, I was pretty heavy, and I still bear some of the psychological scars from that. So I was talking about this, this was made in 2019, talking about that idea and that, and there's some words on there about it. This is uh, the Fabulous Four. Uh, they're walking across um, the same crosswalk that the Beatles walked across. I can't remember what it's called, Abbey Road. Um, this is really fast. <laughs> uh, this is Down We Go. It came out of uh, the idea of fear does to us when in the pandemic when people are hoarding everything and you know, baby chicks and everything. This work, White Horse, uh, 48 by 36, that deals with the idea of Loneliness versus it being lonely, isolation versus alienation. This is uh, flopping flutter, 54 by 48. Um, thinking about uh, as I go through my life, I think, I think back like I've always been a really nice person, but maybe sometimes I wasn't a nice person, but I'm not aware of it. So you need to pile people behind you. <laughs> this is titled Everything Everything. And it has to do with the struggle I have within myself, or I'm trying to move forward and take the leap. I'm taking care of myself, and yet my ego and defenses are always there in the way of keeping me from moving forward. This is Take My Order, uh, uh, 60 by 72, or yeah, 60 by 72 inches. It has to do with the weird poses that I see often in the gym that are perfectly normal in the gym, but weird anywhere else. Uh, this one is, um, do you speak, which is the most common phrase you use when people are uh, vacationing. Do you speak English is usually the one. Taking the idea of intimacy and the public and putting together tourism, that idea. This is, I got old, this is actually me in my underwear on stage. You guys see that? This is uh, Le Bourgeois. It's 72 uh, by 84 inches. Um, it's, it, it's modeled after Rodin's uh, The Burgers of Calais. And if you guys know The Burgers of Calais, they gave up themselves to save the town. But these days, those who rule the world are sort of their own playground. This is called Ashes to Ashes, having to do with the idea of um, relying on institutions such as parents or school or teachers for your own belief system and what, anyway, we'll pass that. Um, this is about the TV on, I was thinking about the idea of retirement and my mother's parents sat and watched TV the whole lives after they retired, whereas my grandmother uh, died 20 years after my grandfather and he, she had the TV on, so she didn't feel alone. This is Hush Little Baby, 36 by 30 inches. And I just thought it really interesting to put a giant baby in the bathroom where he doesn't really need either one. That um, <laughs> solution. This is up, down, down, up. I find myself often, as I'm trying to walk away from my ego and thinking I'm doing a pretty good job, and I reflect on something I said, I'm realizing I'm bragging, I think I'm being vulnerable, has to make it, and then I'm just showing off, you know. Um, this is the last piece, this is called. Uh, gum, gum drip, and it's 
sort of it comes out of the first sentence of Finnegan's Lake by James Joyce, which is the sound of the fall of man, and influenced by a lot of the sort of Renaissance era Armageddon paintings. And that one I'm still attacking. Anyway, those are my paintings that are very quick. <laughs> My name is Barrett Warner. Consumption wears many disguises. It can live in an elbow, pretending to be persitis. It can lodge in the brain like a migraine. It finds a bench, any organ will do. And hidden under a false mustache, it fans its newspaper with two coin-sized holes to peer through and watches you from inside you. The mortal ache goes where you go, puts itself in your world while you're putting yourself in your world. A panic of engagement and apathy all swirling together like wheat field with crows. I thought I'd be safe staring at wax on the Black Bear saloon wall, feeling the beat of bank, steel and borrow, a dirty hatted fiddle band with homespun guitars and a kick drum. I was probably dirty back then, but strong enough to handle it. Before it kills you, your disease makes love to you. Its hand trespasses your collar. It gently bites the wayward bone between your neck and trapezoid. I'm sick, you say. I know, it says. I'm bleeding. I, I'm bleeding, you say. I know, I made you bleed. It's good to get these issues out of the way early in a relationship. Your tuberculosis runs the bow across the middle like a cello, playing a verse of gorgeous hymns so that your ears are drunk from listening. You're drunk and sad, and now the coughing starts. My TB, by the way, was in my gut and stomach and diaphragm. At the hospital, Julia comes midday to spend a lunch on my lip and to wash my hair and my back. Today's fist, bouillon broth, and a rustled egg. She adds ice cubes so I won't burn my tongue, spoons it into me, dabs my chin. I am ravenous. I swallow three times and go back to sleep. When I wake up, she's gone. And my hair is beautiful. Lastly, the night's wet hour begins at 1.30, like a long past dark cowboy radio show with a shy guitar and rolling ungulates and hard long quiet, not dead air, just the listening and spitting towards smoke feathers. I quick lower the volume, worried to disturb the woman gently snoring beside me and a lab or two as if the bed were a campsite. Clammy, and starving, I ease my body's fiasco downstairs to the leather couch. Sleeping, waking, coughing, and bleeding, I wear a kerchief in case it gets windy. When fever shakes me, I tempt myself. Something vaguely ungratifying and lonely of that. But my trouble is just nerves and nausea. I rise to swallow a pill and lie back, waiting for the wash. I hear a winter owl's five feet call lower octave in a minor key, and as if irony couldn't be any less subtle, he calls and calls from the dead tree that we painted yellow last month and strung with lights. It makes me hungry, listening to him call so deep in his boxy chest. It's a new kind of darkness for me, seeing faces on the floor, hearing voices in the wind. What have the yellow demons prepared for me now? What do they want, and where do they want to take me? The sick have no horizon. We fly to an infinite dawn. See, I say, and reach my arms into oblivion. Sing to me. Um, I'm also Senator Williams, go by Sydney. Uh, concept research interdisciplinary um, installation. And just showing you three works, well, two works, and work in progress. I have been carrying out a dialogue between the landscape and the female. I believe this has been a direct result of me having been torn from my homeland during my adolescence. 
I'm overwhelmed by the feeling of having been cast from the womb, nature. The, my art is this way. I reestablish the bonds that unite me to the universe. It is a return to the maternal source, the Anna Minietta. I also create work in the same sentiment as Minietta, with notions of interconnectivity with, with place, space, and community. My body is present. It sets the tempo of the movement. It is to the absence that I'm present. I refer back to where I'm comfortable, which is on the road, by using the landscape as a way of finding my place in my surroundings, always searching for where I belong. With consideration, the materials used in reflection reflection, space and place is, uh, is, is used in the gallery walls as part of an installation um, that I use Plexi to allow a uh, video to travel through the material and also reflect reflect onto the space. In the reflection side of the installation, the use of mirrors create a reflection using eight projectors installed above. Beveled edged mirrors create drawings contained within some of the um, reflections. Research includes physics of light, optics, notions of perception and video and photography, sound tags uh, on photography, and Beta's allegory of the case. The following art emerged from my love in photography, my training in documenting as a photojournalist, and the questioning of the souvenir. Photographs can become a precious commodity with disregard of the terrible color correction, telephone pole sticking out of someone's head, or the cringing cropping where someone gets cut off at the knees. But grandma still frames the photograph. My consideration was to capture the feeling and translate it to another sensory sound and then disregard the image. I created a system in which I translated the image into colored shapes, gridding it and then making sound by designating colors to 88 keys on a keyboard, creating melodies such as this. Each of the colors within the square are played at the same time, which is impossible by the human hand. Using the composition, this is using the composition software, Sibelius. I create photographs between, but there's always longer projects in the undercurrent that often last three to six years, which by <laughs> which can be the case for becoming Guatemalan, uh, which is an exploration of my culture by recontextualizing and contemporizing weaving. Fibers are a way of feeling connected to the maternal ancestry, and the artistic creators who use fibers to carry on iconography and colors to establish regional familiarity. I'm working how to dress the loom, which is really a bunch of sticks. I received a grant to allow me to travel to Guatemala for instruction and then work in Louisville with um, a fiber company. Um, I'm really interested and really fascinated by the notions of backstrap weaving, where the body creates the tension. Annie Alvarez was exhibiting at the Black Mountain College when I visited. A loom was on display. Um, but I was really taken by the notations and the visual similarities of the software. Uh, the end result of becoming Guatemala will be woven melodies. Composition, 
format, arrangement, schema, codification. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Eileen. I create multimedia art installations, sculptures, and short films that are several spaces of comfort and wonder. I suffer from anxiety and insomnia for a long time, so for one way to escape from reality, I began to dream of surreal things that make me feel safe and comfortable. Um, I will explain each work in this installation piece. This work is called The Dreamer Box. Um, it is mixed media sculpture made by clay, epoxy, smooth plaster, and acrylic cylinder. Um, for my work process, I source imagery from my daydreams to create a theatrical atmosphere. The background scenery is drawn from domestic spaces I often occupy in my dreamlike state. And I proceed to fill the stage with symbolic items and imagery such as antique furniture, mobiles, keys, shoes, faces, sculpture events, and body parts. This is a documentation video of the dreamer box. I put transparent acrylic cylinder to enclose the sculpture for distinguishing the outside reality from internal server walls inside. Um, this work is called the Wonder Logo, and I use acrylic panels to cut each symbol and tie it with the wire. Um, all of my symbolic items up here in my work are really so important and happy places from my childhood, such as my mother's sculpture studio and my grandmother's antique shop. My grandmother ran her antique shop for about 50 years, and my mother is a sculptor, so yeah, so it became me. This is trailer of my recent film. After I finish sculpture and installation, I make short films using my artwork as a backdrop. The sculptures and installations become the actors of the film and convey the narrative of my daydream. Um, this work is called The Fourth Wall, and this wall from shape sculpture um, has four different layers inside, so it's the fourth wall, and I want to invite I want to invite viewers into the invisible wall that leads them into another world. Uh, for this piece, I mostly use plywood um, and oil paint to make the sculpture. And now this is stills from my performance video. Um, I use fourth wall as my uh, to do the performance of this film, and I did installations on entire wall to make it more immersive. Um, each different layer represents my memory. And the last work is called The Cause of My Insomnia. This is a series of surreal short films about finding the cause of my insomnia during COVID-19. In this film, I search for hidden clues throughout the room, creating an enigma scenario.
This was trailer of part three of Closing My Insomnia. Thank you for listening tonight. Hi everyone. Um, I'm going to just read. Uh, <laughs> uh, my name is Amit Kaur. Um I'm from California. And my family is from an area near the Afghan-Pakistan border, named by those who tried to conquer it, the Northwest Frontier. I engage in a research-based practice about these two places. My work uses found objects, sounds, and images. Uh, recently, I've used source material from dozens of B-movie westerns churned out by Hollywood in the 1930s and 40s. Um, I manipulate sound and video to uh, comment on the Western genre and its tropes about control, civilization, and uh, heroism. Um, I choose small moments from different films and place them side by side and slow them down to a ghostly pace. Um, I manipulate, distort, and layer the movie's uh, original audio to create a uh, haunting, or so I think, soundtrack. Um, the effect hopefully creates a new disturbing context for a familiar Americana imagery. Um, I believe these films' attitudes about belonging, heroism, and power has shaped American attitudes towards frontiers uh, and the American dream. Um, so. Since I was 
15 or something. Um, there are at least two kinds of silence that define us. One is the eloquence of the world as we were given it, the silence of light and beauty, the silence that holds a promise. It is a stillness, especially audible on the prairie or next to trees. There's also sometimes a dark silence within us, one that results from willful blindness and deafness. We struggle against it. What will this country be? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Allison Green. Uh, I'm here doing sculpture. Uh, we can just dive right in, I think. Um, so I wanted to start with this piece to provide the context that um, I came up as a seamstress and as a costume maker. I've been sewing all my life. This is the first piece that I made for um, a Broadway production when I moved to New York. This is for Phantom of the Opera. I worked as a first hand for a couple of years, um, left in 2018. Um, this is uh, the first work of mine that I got to see in Sesame Street. Um, I did prop fabrication and costumes for puppets um, this past season. If anyone's got little kids, you can uh, see this in, in this season. Um, I also wanted to, just for a moment of fun, share um, some cartoons. Uh, cartooning is a big part of my practice as well. Um, and they sort of lend themselves to these themes that I'm also exploring in all of the fine art and all the fabrication that I do as well. Um, clearly, some big three lines for me, both through applied art and fine art, are this construction of femininity, um, the anxieties that accompany that both socially and bodily. So that's kind of what these cartoons are, are starting to hint at. Um, and these concerns about body and anxiety and femininity will take us right into miniature work, which is the work I've primarily been focusing on here. Starting with food has just a really interesting symbolic place to think about, you know, female identity, domesticity, um, Americana in general. I love working small because it's a great way to design by constraint. I use found objects. This is a soy sauce container. Um, and yeah, Americana symbolism comes up for me a lot, especially through food. Um, I also, I'm really inspired by granny squares. This is based on a quilt of granny squares that my granny made. Um, and uh, yeah, a lot of it is just about working small, working in layer, um, the sort of meticulous nature of it, and um, expanding into other domestic symbols, um, again, just as a way to kind of explore um, both the humor and the more morbid side of what it means to be kind of like fixating on this, this domestic space. Um, I also wanted to just kind of pivot and share, um, this is a nature study, um, you know, I'm from Vermont, as most of you know, and um, this is also just a really important part of my practice, um, especially someone who's working a lot with this, you know, kind of almost fetish imagery in, um, you know, this kind of Americana symbolism. It's really easy to go kitsch. Um, it's highly autobiographical, it's highly political, so I really try to keep myself engaged in a practice that is about totally shedding ego and shedding identity as well, which is why I still work abstract. Uh, these are works that I've just very recently done in an art class that I take. Um, they're from the figure, uh, but abstract. I love working in this way with automatic line. It reminds me a lot of dressmaking and embroidery. I think I'm still really exploring the visual world as a dressmaker um, and really trying to head in some new directions. Uh, that's it. Thank you so much. So I'm Christy Gordon. I grew up in Canada and I'm in New York now. And I've always seen a little bit of potential for magic, so I think strange and surreal interactions between humans and animals and things like that. And this is the first explosion I've ever seen. Um, yeah, and so I've become like really interested in triptychs, which is why I'm not here. I like the movement from like the dark side to the light side, the different sides like flash during the light. And yeah, but I, I like how um, it's a challenge to compose it so that it works as a whole. Like this composition of each panel separately like works as a composition. And the big mystical creature in the background is my favorite part of that. Um, this is a painting called Magic, M-A-G-I-C-K, and it's kind of uh, like an alchemical scene with the winged serpent on the left. And like, there might be a lion that I made in a tiger because I am trying to incorporate pattern into my work. And um, I like the kind of that. And I, I'm really interested in like the mystical traditions within certain religions, um, uh, like um, Catalan and Judaism. 
And so I first saw this Syrian tablet, but the net, I um, immediately recognized in Martin's school tree, the tree of life, the Kabbalah. And I like how art can embed these sort of secret ancient traditions of that. So I tried to construct this tree um, that kind of has a sacred geometry kind of like woven into the structure of the leaves and things like that. Um, this is a big painting of the Lord Baptist. This one is six inches by nine to six inches, and it's called the Cosmic Lotus. Um, sort of this idea of like a cosmic battle between like spiritual darkness and light, um, and then sort of the Dutch Manitas in the in, um, foreground. Um, and then this painting is the first where I started to play around with having an upper world, a middle world, and a lower world. Um, I really like, like the cutaway kind of and sort of adding some pictures into this. I feel a lot of that at the National History Museum in New York. And this one is um, called Artificial Light. At first, the um, cosmic sort of scene in the background looks like a cosmos, but when you look closer, it's a giant overflow cell phone, kind of like a to look at the social media and stuff. And, and then this one, I started to kind of play around with how to get more patterns in my work. Well, but I, but I also work really representationally and have a lot of form in my work, so it was really fun to get like the pattern on the snakes. Um, this one, if you guys had fun at the photo shoot the other day, this is a photo shoot I did with my philosophy class. <laughs> um, it was an especially fun with the open world screen. Um, and yeah, and then let's see, there's always like a fire in that kind of like, you know, like um, yeah, so I like to play by women at the center of interest of my paintings. I'm working in a tradition, like a language that's traditionally kind of um, a masculine language. So, uh, you know, from women at the center, I like some women who take like fairies and things. It's fun for me. Um, I like to play with, like, constructing a system of logic and then kind of forming it too. So, like, having this curtain in the, in the side with, like, Renaissance soldier kind of sort of calling it a rope. Um, yeah, that kind of thing. And this one is another really big painting that took me like three years to complete, and it's like reading through all sorts of references. Um, but I'm really enjoying like really magical plants and flowers kind of like eat into the scene in my paintings. This one has another of these hybrid plants, like magical plants, um, with patterns and, and things. And then this one is kind of like an underworld kind of situation. Um, it has Two title games. I never know which one to go with. She doesn't even know why. And this is starting to get into, get into more recent work. Um, I've been like inspired by Eastern miniatures, and um, but still kind of trying to find the balance between um, those kind of like conditions, but then having the representation of the um, This you can hardly tell, but the tree in the middle, the little one, is gold leaves, and the antlers are gold leaves, um, and it's it's. Uh, I don't know, just add like a little mystical element in this one thing like that. Um, yeah, and this one too, I was playing around with gold leaf. Kind of experimental techniques, trying to like figure out how to get gold leaf on and then maybe like put a layer of paint on to get like the shadow side so that it sits within the painting. Um, it was inspired by painting with the neck. And this one too has gold leaf. And I've been trying to find ways of putting little like futuristic kind of weird elements into it. So um, it was really fun to paint what I call the alien spider robot and the reason it's kind of clear. And then putting the right light kind of on it. This is the most recent game that I'm working on here. It's another triptych. And some of you guys might recognize the beginning of yourself in the middle panel. The right <laughs> this panel is totally unfinished. Um, so you can almost see how I work. It starts with like pretty much stick figures. So, um, my name is Anna Weberson. I am a painter, um, and this is my first artist residency, um, and I'm so happy to be here. I have this slideshow, it's a little out of order. Um, so, anyway, I'm just going to kind of go with where we are. Um, when I paint, so first of all, I am captured by beauty. Beauty, color, energy, and I think that's where I go with my paintings. My paintings are on panel, on canvas, and on paper. So that's kind of what we'll see. And I work on a lot of different things at one time. 
So let's start. So this is a uh, 30 by 30 painting. It's acrylic, mixed media, um, crayon, ink, etc. And I've done a lot of these, and now I'm trying to kind of tone them down, take out some information. But I kind of go back and forth from busy paintings to less busy paintings. And I'm still trying to figure out who it may be. Again, mixed media, acrylic, um, inks, crayons. I use different materials for application too. I work fairly fast, but um, but often I spend a lot of time looking. So this was my first piece that took me into abstraction. I went to the skate park. I would take my boys um, to the skate park. And this was a way of showing where I was without having to make it realistic. My tools, I used credit cards, squeegees, trowels, crayons, rug pads, um, bubble wrap. Um, any number of different things. The chain is is represented in my paintings a lot. Uh, it could be jewelry, it could be um, iron chains, it could be vines, ropes. To me, they kind of represent how we connect, how we're woven together. This is on paper, and I started going just kind of blue, doing more work that was blue, or maybe blue and black. Um, and there's an ampersand in these. And often, again, on paper, um, mixed media, trying to leave the paper to speak for itself as well. Try not to, on these paper pieces, cover up everything that's there. Um, my work tends to be more feminine. Um, so again, you see my reference to chains and fences and binds. Um, and delicacy, I love the paper, I love seeing the deckled edge of the paper. Barbed wire. Um, this is on panel, this is a bit larger. And I try to limit my power here and go just kind of blue, yellow, pink, and see what happens. Again, chains, trowels, stencils. Um, this is this is a painting I worked on for months, and one day it just finished itself. Um, and my paintings like this will have many layers under them. Um, this is a large piece. This is a 72 by 72 um, on linen. And this one, I'm just kind of trying to let the linen still appear in this painting. Um, this is a painting I did for a large hospital. They asked me to do a painting in red and black. And um, for this one, I tried to kind of go with this upward momentum and, and layers. This is here in the studio. These are several pieces I'm working on in paper, trying to keep a limited palette. Again, reference to chains. And I'm actually using like a 24 karat in one of those leaf. And this is in my studio here too. Um, that's about 50, 55 inches by 55 inches. Um, I'm still trying to resolve it. And again, you can see the trowels. Um, I used to do sculpture, so this was supposed to be kind of at the beginning of my my talk. And again, what I see that references here is the curvy lines. I like these organic shapes um, and fragility. 